video all, all about mats and how I brush out Stassi. And you know, she gets knots just like any other dog in long coat. And that is one of the things that is high maintenance about keeping a Shih Tzu or any other breed in a long coat is that you have to be very, very diligent on getting out any kind of knots and mats before they get, you know, bad. So, because mats tend to grow. So you have to make sure that you, you know, get them out in a very quick fashion. So usually I do this on, in my bed actually at night is when I usually do her full comb out. Um, and you know, getting out the little knots that she accumulates throughout the day. It's amazing that I can do it every single night and then the next night we have more knots. But it comes with the territory of keeping a dog in long coat and I actually love it. It's therapy to me. So it's not, it's not bad for me at all. So I will show you the tools that I normally keep out um, when I do this process every night. So I usually give her a good brush out first with the brush using this Show Premium Royal Treatment Brushless Oil um, or spray and it is a maintenance spray and anytime I brush her coat out, I will usually spritz a little bit of this on. It smells absolutely wonderful and her coat is beautiful. So it's keeping it nice and shiny and I just really, really love it. Um, the next product that I keep on hand in case I need it is the Show Premium Not Anymore Detangler. And I only put this in if I come across a tough mat or knot that I need to get out. Other than that, I really don't use much of the detangler um, because I really haven't found that I needed it that much. I use my Chris Christensen 27 millimeter pen brush and the seven and a half Chris, uh, seven and a half inch Chris Christensen butter comb. This is absolutely necessary. Um, and this is the main tool that I use when I am brushing her out every night or combing her out, shall I say. And then I do have this little slicker brush, which is the triangle slicker brush. Um, had some hair in there. Um, and I will only use this if I come across a really tough mat, but most of the time I don't have to use this um, either because I'm you know, pretty much keeping on top of them. But those mats sure do pop up every single day. All right, so the very first step that I do whenever I am um, going to start brushing her out is I will spritz the Royal Treatment Spray, and you don't wanna use a whole lot because a little goes a long way. And I will just give her a rough brush out. This only gets to the really top areas of the coat. And you know, you can think that you are brushing them out and oh, you know, like right now, I don't feel any knots, but I guarantee she's got some knots in there. So I will kind of turn her around on the table, I will get her to stand up and I will lift up her tail and get her britches area. And like I said, this is just kind of like a rough, you know, brush out that basically just gets that top area. Her coat has gotten so long. She will be one on May 17th. So it's coming up because we're already in April. I can't believe she's gonna be a year old already. Oh, you're not gonna be a puppy. Okay, so my camera's battery died as I was in the middle of saying that I can't believe that my little princess here is going to be one in just a little over a month. So she turns one on May 17th. So she will technically not be a puppy anymore. Once they hit one, they are not considered a puppy. Um, she is full grown. She weighs 10 pounds exactly, which is 
perfect for me. She is nice and portable and she's just perfect in every way. Aren't you? <laughs> All right, so let's get back to the purpose of this video, which is to show you how I get mats out. Now, I have no idea if she has mats on her right now because, um, you know, I, I comb her. I usually do this at night, and I usually do this in bed while I'm watching TV. You know, it just gives me something to do while we're watching, like our favorite shows. And so I'm going to... Hope that this is going to show you exactly what I do and that you can see this um, in the view that I have it here on the camera. All right, so once I comb her or brush her with the brush using the Show Premium Brushless Royal Treatment Spray, then I work on any kind of knotting. So what I do is I kind of work in sections and I will use my comb for this. So this comb is perfect and I hope that she behaves. We just got back from eating so um, she's been in her pen and I probably should have let her run around a little bit but I wanted to get this filmed because Harper needs a bath so lots to do. Um, so hopefully she will behave. So what we, what I normally do is I run the comb through different areas of her hair and if I feel a knot, then I will work on that particular sec section. So now we're doing, I'm combing out her ears and one of the common spots to get knots is behind the ears because she tends to scratch like most dogs do and um, that's a real common spot. Now, I have been working on her lying on her side like this and you know, she, she does pretty well with it but at times she doesn't do as well. So this is gonna be a totally crapshoot to see how she's gonna behave today because sometimes she's extremely well and sometimes she doesn't want to do it as, you know, it needs a lot of encouragement to lay back down. I just find that this is the easiest way is to have her on the side, but she's very nosy and she, you know, doesn't really like me getting knots out of her fur, so that doesn't make it any easier. But all I can say is just keep trying with your dog and eventually they do get the idea and they, you know, get calmer with things. Now, I do have a knot right here that I felt with the with the comb. Oh, and what I wanted to say is, you know, when she goes to get up, you'll see me just put her back down each time. I just gently put her back down and that kind of gives her an idea. So once I fe felt a knot with my comb, then I take that area and I try and find it um, because you know, isolating the knot is going to be a lot easier than just ripping through the, all of that hair. So what I do is I take my fingers and I kind of separate the hair until I find where that little knot is. She doesn't get matted, and I have two here. She doesn't get matted really bad uh, because I'm on top of it, but what she does get is these little bitty areas of knots that would grow into a mat if I left it. So you wanna isolate the area that was a knot and then use your fingers to separate that hair into smaller knots. <laughs> Um, this is going to be the most easiest way to get through um, knotting is if you kind of use your fingers to separate and make them into little bitty, little bitty knots. And your fingers are going to be your best tool because you can take care of a lot of things just with your fingers. And then you're going to take the area that had the knot and you want to hold close to the skin so that it's not pulling on her skin. You're only pulling on the hair. And then you're going to use the fine area of your comb and get that knot out. And then like these little knots are so small that it's just kind of going through that. And then as she does that, as she feels me tugging on that knot, she's gonna lift up 
and I just put her back down. And then sometimes if the that comb was um, that knot, the comb was just sliding right over that knot because it's so tiny. So then that's when I'll use like my slicker brush because the little needles are closer together and hopefully that will, you know, um, grab that little knot out of there. Okay, so we got that, those two. And then you're just going to want to work in sections. Stasi's coat is very, very thick. She did come from a show breeder and her line, like in her pedigree is all um, show dogs. So they are bred to have these, you know, beautiful thick coats. And she definitely has that thick coat, and, but that makes it even more harder to make sure that she stays not free because it's so thick. I mean, it really is thick. All right, and then I try and work quickly because she doesn't really like staying on her side that much yet. Um, but you see, I just had a knot. Oops, sorry. I just had a knot that I pulled out and there it is. And it's all of the little undercoat knots that you're going to, to get. All right, so let's get started, really get started here. All right, so she has a part down the side of her, or down the middle of her back. So normally what I do is I'll part an area, I'll part like a section that is up to that part. So I took a section from the part, and put your head down, Stas, and then taking that small section, I will comb through it to make sure that I don't catch any knots. Making sure that my comb goes all the way to her skin. Okay, so we have that section done. And then I will part the next section and pull it up. And then holding the hair close to the skin, I will just gently go through that hair. And it is a little bit of a tedious process because I'm taking just small sections. That's, uh, that section is done. No, no, it's okay, it's okay. Okay, and then I grab up another section. And I can get most of the knotting out without having to use my fingers. And then when I get down to her leg, then I will just go forward. Holding, like I said, holding it by the skin so that it doesn't pull her, you know, as much as possible. One of the other problem areas is always under the armpits. So then you wanna lift up on that leg. And I usually go from under the armpit and then start combing all the way up to the paw, paw pad. And then I just go down her body in the same fashion. So I will get this next section that I didn't get 
first. No, no. And she does like to mouth me. If you see, she does like to mouth me. She will put her teeth on my hands, but she doesn't bite. So she's just telling me, hey, I don't like that. You know, it doesn't feel very good, but she doesn't bite me at all. She just kind of mouths me. So, and you know, I just, I don't stop when she does that because she needs to learn that this is what we need to do in order to keep her mat free. And as you can see with the comb, I will, um, before I, well, I'll do it at, well, no, I'll do it now. <laughs> um, these are the little knots that I pulled out from the other section. So, you know, it's pulling out the undercoat is what it's doing. Okay, head down. And I usually will tell her down a bunch of times and I'll keep saying down. And then she knows that that means that she needs to put her head down, down in order for us to get this done. And she looks over at me like, what are you doing? <laughs> She's used to it though. All right, so that's that section. And then, <laughs> she's so nosy. You a nosy girl, nosy girl. And you don't wanna just rip through the hair. You want to go you know, fairly slowly and just like, like almost like you're whipping an egg. So you think about like when you scramble an egg, that's kind of what I'm doing. So I'm just kind of slowly whipping that fur because you don't want to damage the fur. So you just want to get the little knots out. Okay. All the while, I'm holding it by the skin. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Down. Mats and little knots can be aggravating, that's for sure. No, ma'am. And then when she gets up, I just gently put her back down so that she knows that she needs to be in this position for her comb outs. And then this next section, same thing. So whip it like you are scrambling up an egg. As you're going section by section. And then once I get the sections done, then I will go back the opposite way to smooth that hair back down. Head down. Look at you. You look in a mess in your face. Down. Down. So just ever so gently, you know, the coats in order to maintain them in good condition, you want to be gentle because you don't want a coat that's going to have lots of broken edges and you know split hairs and i'm really pleased at the way her coat is um, developing and i know that right now is one of the toughest times because she's transitioning between her puppy coat and her adult coat so that's the time when you usually get a lot of these little bitty knots. And, you know, you have to really pay attention to the coat because I am telling you, this coat will get these knots overnight. 
because she was just brushed last night and you know here we are with our little knots again today it's just so easy to knot up now I wish I would come across a mat so that I could show you what I do to get those out. But basically, I'm not going to show you, you know, we'll be here for an hour if I, you know, do the whole thing that I do. Not that it takes an hour, but with me explaining stuff, it does take longer than if I was not explaining it. So that's the basic principle that I do throughout her whole body. So I would, you know, do one side and then I would, you know, turn her around and then I would do her back in the same way. So I would take up a section, hold it by the skin, and just comb and then I will show you again so we just clean the comb but look at this undercoat that has come out see that so that's what you want you want that undercoat to come out because that undercoat is very cottony and that's where those mats will just develop you know overnight so I don't think she has any mats. She just has these little undercoat knots. So basically that is how I, you know, comb her and give her a nice comb out every single night. And see that? Little, little, uh, like tumbleweeds. That's what they are, like a little tumble, tumbleweeds. And then what I do is I turn her and I put her on this side. So what I what I do to do that is kind of roll her hips so that she's lying on her side. And then we would do the same exact things on this side. So let me see, I'm not gonna go through, like I said, to keep this video at a decent length. I'm not gonna go through the whole thing, but I'm gonna see if I can find a mat. Um, now, she will be going to Miss Lynn, who is our groomer. I don't know if it's this week or next week because we have not gone since the last video that I groomed, that I uh, filmed over at her place. And I want her to, you know, shave up her belly because you don't even see this. Oh, she's going to get really comfortable now. Um, you don't see this part when she's standing. And so that's just less that I have to comb through. Um, so I'm going to get her just like she showed on the video. She's just going to shave up the belly up to like this chest part. And that way, you know, that will also keep her cooler. Okay, I think I found a mat. So let's see. I'm gonna put her on her on her back. Try and get her to an area where I can show you. Okay, you have to lay. All right, where is it? And I, when I say a mat, it's just an area that's a little bit bigger than those little uh, tiny knots that you saw me take out. So, this area right by her leg, and I don't know if you can see this, but this is like a clump of hair that is clumped it together. So, if I left this, this would turn into a huge mat that would be matted up to her skin. Um, so, what I'm going to do is then I'm going to use my fingers to separate it. as much as possible. And then I will show you the, what I use um, the detangler for. It would be on a bigger area like this. So if I have come across an area that's bigger, then I would just spritz it with the not anymore detangler. And I would use my, um, it's the, called the A5V. I'm sorry if I'm getting this out of the, the frame here, but um, this is the A5E slicker brush. And I, I don't use this all the time, only when I have a bigger, 
like a bigger knot would I use this. So I think the Not Anymore Detangler Spray basically just protects the hair so that you're not like pulling hair out. And these little tiny needles in this brush really work well to get through the mat. But most of the time I am just using my butter comb. All right, so that took care of that one. <laughs> She's all over the place. And you know, when I have her in bed with me, um, watching TV, detangling her, I it's easier for me because I put her right in between my legs and you know, I, she's on her back and she's on her side and it's just easier for me to do this part when I'm kind of over her uh, instead of just on the side of her like I am, you know, at the grooming table. So generally, we do morning routine at the grooming table every morning, and then nighttime routine, which is basically just uh, exactly what I'm showing you here, I do while I'm watching TV. And that, you know, I kind of kill two birds at one stone because I'm able to, you know, watch my, my, you know, my shows. I don't watch a whole lot of TV. And most of the time, it's like my husband watching stuff that I don't even care to watch. And so I'm just sitting there detangling Stasi, And then I do the same, you know, with Harper too. All right. So I will point out the areas of interest that you will definitely want to pay attention to, and that is underneath the armpits, that's a common place to get matting and knotting, behind the ears, and in between the legs, and all around like the legs. She gets knotted right here a good bit, which is like on the side of her arms, and that is from wearing her harness every day. Um, she doesn't wear her harness for very long. She only wears it when we, oh my goodness, so oh, you got freaked out. <laughs> Her. She only wears her harness like to and from the studio, but it's enough to, you know, get this knotted, this, um, not knotted hair. It's enough to get like this, um, cottony hair in a knot. So, um, you know, I make sure and don't leave it on her for very long. As soon as we get there, we take it off. But so basically that's it. That is how I get knots and mats out of Stasi. I wish that I could have, you know, shown you more matting and exactly, you know, some more instances where we take those out, but she just doesn't have, you know, any matting on her. Um, so, and that's a good thing, but I am here to tell you that if I would not be doing this every single night, she would be a matted, knotted mess because just me doing this every night, those knots, you know, show up and I wind up after every session, I have a little pile of hair that, you know, I have taken out the, um, the knots. So... And in just this little while that I have shown you, I can just show you what I have gotten out of her because I have it right here on the side. And there we go. So that's all like little bitty knots and it's just like cotton. It's like, a, it's like the cotton, it's cotton. It's very soft. <laughs> oh, she's gonna lick me. All right, so basically that concludes this video. I hope this um, helped. I know that, you know, some of you are writing and saying that, you know, how do you get your, how do you get Stassi to stay still? How do you get her to, um, you know, be so good with grooming? And all I can say and offer advice to you guys is to keep at it. Just keep doing it you know she has been 
getting groomed like this since she was a, a very small puppy. It started out with her breeder. Her breeder, you know, was really good with getting her up on a table and, you know, grooming her. And when she got to me at 12 weeks old, I continued and she really has been very, very good um, because she's very used to it. So she knows the routine and always give like yummy treats when you're up at the table, especially if you're having problems with your dog because that will get them to associate grooming with a yummy treat. I always recommend that you save an especially yummy treat just for grooming, like a treat that you would normally not give otherwise. Um, and that would be their special treat, something that they absolutely go crazy over. Um, you know, things like you can take a block of Romano cheese and it's the, the hard cheese that you buy in the grocery store and cut it up into little bitty, bitty pieces. And when you are, you know, doing anything, it once they are quiet and they're doing good, that's when you treat them. Not when they're acting up. You want to get them to associate, you know, like if I would be trying to teach her to lay down, you know, I would go um, down, down, and treat. As the minute she would stay down, 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 and treat. Except I wouldn't treat her if she lifts up her head. So that's, you know, my advice as far as how do you get your dog to, you know, get used to grooming. So anyway, that concludes this video for real this time. You know me, I can talk, 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 talk. <laughs> Um, so if you are um, subscribed, I want to thank you guys for subscribing. We love you guys so much. Um, if you are following us on Facebook, I usually you know, try to keep active on Facebook. And our new thing that we are, oh, that's my alarm. The new thing that we are um, active on is Snapchat. So if you are interested in seeing what me and Stassi and Harper are up to every day, just follow us on Snapchat at Stassi the Zoo, and we'll catch you on the next video. Bye guys. Goodbye, Stassi. We hope you're having a great day. Bye bye.